So this is a seminar that we put together um, to keep food simple. Too many times when you get into food, we want to make it complex. It's really not that complex. What is complex is the discipline that it takes to pull it off because we're creatures of habit. <clears throat> There's about four different things that I did differently with this seminar. So <clears throat> as we go through it, I'm seeing how you respond to it and seeing if it's something that we can continue. Hi, glad you're here. So one of the things I do once a month is I have a handful of videos that I watch because it really makes me connect. This particular video that I'm going to play for you is Steve Harvey. I enjoy Steve Harvey because Steve is he's really blunt. He's really just straightforward. There's not a lot of fluff. And being from Detroit, we kind of like things that are straightforward. So this is one of the things out of the four that I'm going to add. <clears throat> the reason that I put this in here is, folks, it doesn't matter what your age is. It's a state of mind. It's a state of being. And this is something that I watch once a month and I think has value to you as well. I'm going to share something with you. I'm going to tell you something that every successful person has to do, including you. Believe it or not, every successful person in this world has jumped. I'm going to tell you what I mean by that. You eventually, you are going to have to jump. You cannot just exist in this life. You have got to try to live. If you're waking up thinking that it's got to be more to your life than it is, man, believe that it is. Believe in your heart of hearts that it is. But to get to that light, you're going to have to jump. I'll tell you why I call it jumping. See, God, when he created all of us, gave every last one of us a gift at birth. He never created a soul without endowing them with a gift. You just got to quit looking at gifts as running, jumping, singing, and dance. It's more than that. It's if you know how to network, if you can connect dots, if you draw, if you teach, some of y'all fry chicken better than anybody else. Bake pie. Some of you cut hair, color hair. Some people do grass. I got a partner, man. We never wanted to go out with us because we stayed out too late. Come on, man, go out with now. I got to get up early tomorrow. I'm cutting this Johnson grass. We kept laughing at this dude. Cutting grass. How much they pay? He got a landscaping company in Cleveland worth $4 million. Because all he do is cut grass. But he was gifted at it. I got a partner on a detail shop, make $800,000 a year, detailing cars. He got six mobile trucks running around, $800,000 a year. All he do is detail cars. That's his gift. That's what he loved to do. You've got to identify that gift. Now listen to me. When you see people in life, when you're standing on the cliff of life, and you see people soaring by, when you see people soaring, going to exotic places, you hear about them doing wonderful things. Maybe you look up the street and your neighbor just gets a car every year, every two years. You know, how is he doing that? Have you ever thought, maybe this person right here has identified their guilt and is living in their guilt? Because your Bible says, it's your Bible, says your gift will make room for you. Your gift, not your education. You go get an education, that's nice. But if you don't use your gift, that education only going to take you so far. I know a lot of people got degrees, man, that they ain't even using. It's your gift. But the only way for you to soar is you got to jump. You got to take that gift that's packed away on your back. You got to jump off that cliff and pull that cord. That gift opens up and provides the soul. If you don't ever use it, you're going to just go to work. And if you get up going to work on a job every day that you hate going to, that ain't living, man. You just existed. At one point in time, you ought to see what living's like. But the only way to see what living's like, you got to jump. And here's the problem. Just be real with you. When you first jump, 
Let me tell you something. The parachute will not open right away. I, I'm sorry. I, I wish I could tell you it did, but it don't. When you jump, it's not going to open right away. You're going to hit them rocks. You're going to get some skin tore off on the cliffs. You're going to get all your clothes tore off. You're going to get some cuts on you. You're going to be bleeding pretty bad. But eventually, eventually, the parachute has to open. That is a promise of God. That ain't a theory. That's a promise. His promises is true. Because listen to me. You cannot name one single thing God has not gotten you through. Name it. And if he ain't got you through it, he currently pulling you through it right now. And the living proof of it is you sitting in here. If he hadn't got you through it, you wouldn't even be here. So if he ain't never not got you through it, why would he not let your parachute open? He, it has to open, man. But now you got to jump, though. Now, here's another thing. You can play it safe and deal without the cuts and the tags. And you can stand on that cliff of life forever safe. But if you don't jump, I got another promise I can make you. Your parachute will never open. You'll never know. You'll never know what God really has. See, your God has a wonderful life for you. Once again, I'm gonna refer to your Bible. Now, you go down there, you memorize these scriptures, you're gonna apply them to yourself. Your Bible says that he comes to give you life and give you life more abundantly. If I were you, I would jump. Because that's the only way to get to that abundant life. You got to jump, man. You got to take a chance. Now, when I get through talking, there are those of you who have discussed this in the car. Well, I got bills. And I got, I got bills. I, whether you stay on the cliff or you jump, you're going to have bills. Well, if I quit my job, I'm going to ruin my credit. If you got a job, you live in check to check. Even if you got A1 credit, you can't buy nothing else, no damn way. At one point in time, man, do yourself a favor. Go, go see what God really do. God hold you up, man. He ain't going to let you fall. He ain't bring you this far let you fall. Do yourself a favor, man. Before you leave this world, before you die, jump. Just jump one time. Just jump. Thank you very much. That is a video that I watch once a month. Because what each one of us needs to do is we need to recognize what our blessings are, what we've been given, and what our gift is, and then we need to act and we need to jump. I'm fortunate I've jumped five times. Scared half out of my mind. And just like, okay, Lord, here we go. And you get tore up. But the difference is, is each time that I've jumped, I've soared to higher heights than I would have if I didn't jump. That make sense? So this doesn't have anything to do with age, does it? Because too many people don't know what their gifts are because they've been too afraid to jump. So find out what your love is, find out what your passion is, and then jump. So today we're going to talk about clean food. What do you mean clean and dirty food? Dirty food, as we spoke with earlier, about 15 minutes ago, if it's not from God, if it's not from the ground, right? That's what we need to be eating. And the further that we've gotten away from that, then the bigger our problems become. So food is very simple. I could probably do this in about a two minute lecture. <laughs> eat a lot of vegetables eat clean proteins and avoid the middle of the store. That's it. Have a good day. It is. But we want things to be quick. We want things to be easy. Now most of you folks I would think are retired. So you have a little more time. Well if you've got a little more time you need to plan your work and work your plan. If that's what you want. But it takes work and it takes discipline. Clean food is identified as non-modified. 
It's not genetically modified. Oh, there was some legislation that the FDA approved one, two, three weeks ago that stated by 2025 that um, all beef had to be this processed pink slime stuff. Mm -hmm. And they, they had agreed to not allow real beef on the market. <laughs> right, we all laugh. It's like, what do you mean? I just passed two dozen cows coming in. <laughs> but this is the stuff that's going on in our government that's going to affect us down the road. Much like what's affecting us today, the foundation was laid years ago. So clean food is just food from God. Berries, apples, nuts, seeds, roots of different types, carrots, tomatoes, and then clean proteins. It really is that simple. I have not seen too many people that have gotten obese and diseased because they've eaten too much broccoli. So when I'm working with patients and they say, but I get up every night about midnight and I'm hungry, eat more broccoli. But I don't like broccoli. <laughs> ah, that's where the challenge is. The challenge is between your ears, between what you like and what you don't like, and what's good for you and what's bad for you, right? So that's what we're going to talk about. How did we get to a place when we're constantly checking our food? The biggest advancement in health, people, is sanitation. It's sanitation and it's cleaning. Whether it's cleaning our hands or whether it's cleaning our food. That's where the advancement's been. We like to think that it's other things, but it's not. We know that if there's a stream, you can't be drinking from a stream where you've got cows upriver doing their business in the stream. I mean, now we recognize that, but years ago that wasn't the case. Much of the disease processes that we're dealing with, or much of the disease processes that we're looking at stepping away from, is because of sanitation. It's cleaning. Does everybody have a dime? I've got a pocket for you. You've got two. <laughs> Every time I come in, he wants more and more dimes. <clears throat> I think it's his college fund. Now it's the pair of Bill Trump's. You're not that high. <laughs> so why am I handing out dimes? Because I want you to think. If I give you something, you'll think, why does he have that? Mm -hmm. So the next clue is, how much does it weigh? So when you're thinking about food, it's cleaning things. Cleaning your workstation before you get started. Cleaning your hands. Washing the vegetables. Washing the food, right? Preparing your meats. What do we know about chicken and eggs? And when you prepare those things, you've got to clean, 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 and then go back behind and clean, right? right. This is where the advancement's been. It's been in what we clean. Organic. This is a word that's been under attack for 20 years uh -huh. that I know of. Organic, we have to constantly go back and visit the definition of. And what the last two years has taught us is that definitions change like the wind. And that's tough, especially for us doctors. Things are set. They're not changing. If they're changing, you know shenanigans are going on. Organic means in its natural state. <clears throat> so when you walk into a grocery store, usually when you walk in over to the right is where your produce section is. Stand in the middle of the produce section, turn 360 degrees, and I want you to eat one of everything in there monthly. So you're like, well, peppers. We've got yellow peppers and red peppers and green peppers. Yeah, eat one of each. Why? Just eat them. <laughs> God makes different colors because they have different benefits. Just eat them. Right? So if you do that, and then you turn around and say, okay, what do I need to eat once a week? Dark green leafies. 
Spinach? Okay. Asparagus? What else? Kale. Kale? Yes. Exactly. So those are things you eat once a week. Okay. Kind of getting easy now, right? Yeah. The same way when you walk to the back of the store, that's where your meats are, all across the back. What does organic beef mean? What does organic chicken mean? It means it doesn't have the chemicals and the pesticides and the hormones and the fertilizers and all the rest of the garbage that's causing our disease. So what I like to do when it comes to meat products or vegetable products, try and buy them local. Try and buy them local. Get with some of the different meat packing places, some of the different farmers. Buy these things local. Genetically modified. <clears throat> Are you really interested in consuming something that's genetically modified? No. Right, you just think about that, it's like, no. It's not resonating with you. And I hope it doesn't. But this is the way that our world is going. So do you know who just became the largest landowner in the US? Bill Gates. <laughs> no. Yeah, Bill Gates. Really? Yeah. Yes, because he's part of this climate group that want to eliminate cattle because they're producing too much methane gas. Yeah. Uh, you know, I just, I can't make this stuff up. I don't, I'm not that creative. It used to be a lot of the paper companies, the companies that were uh, forcing the trees, uh, that, that has now changed. So yes, just get back to what it is. What has changed in the processing since the 60s? Now, we're all of an age where we remember back then, right? <clears throat> What's changed? Well, I know that if you were to Google American Beaches 1970, click on images, what would you see? Everybody on the beach in 1970 was thin. Everybody. Try it. You would have to look very hard to find someone that had more than 30 pounds extra. Now, do the same thing instead of 1970, pull that out, put it in 2020. It's 50 years. What are you going to see? You can't find anyone that's thin. So us doctors need to look at that a little differently. And we have to say, if everybody was thin and now everybody is healthy or heavy, it's not the people. I can't say you're doing this and you're doing that and, because it's everybody. So now you've got to look a whole lot deeper. <clears throat> the way their foods are prepared. Have any of you traveled abroad? You go to different countries and walk into a McDonald's and what I'm thinking specifically of is Japan. When you walk into a McDonald's in Japan, it is so unlike one you have here in the United States. Because Japan won't allow all this garbage to be run through their restaurants. But here in the United States, it's allowed. So that's really where the problem is. The problem is in our food, and our problem is in our health care. <clears throat> One of the examples that I like to use, um, my wife and I were 57 years old. All of our labs are normal. When I go and do my yearly check, they can't believe that someone 57 years old is not on a medication. Never been on a medication. My last vaccine, I was 14 years old. Never been on a medication. Never had vaccines since I was 14. Okay, so why? Because I'm doing these things. I'm exercising on a regular basis. I'm eating clean. I'm drinking clean. And more importantly, every three months I get labs. Draw my blood, get labs, and see where everything's at. And if anything starts to get wonky, a little elevated, a little decreased, then you address it by your lifestyle. That's the only difference. If I have high blood pressure, doesn't it make sense that there's a why? So if I took a blood pressure medication, it lowers my blood pressure. Did we address the why? No. Okay, how's that working for us? Right, because until you address the why, the problem is going to compound until one day you, the wheels are falling off 
And you're like, how did I get here? Yeah. Stay to the outside. Stay to the outside. At our office, I like to pull out every once in a while. We've got this big water container, and I like to get a bunch of organic lemons and put them in. Put that out in the waiting room. Organic lemons are a lot smaller than regular lemons. So people buy the bigger lemons because they think they're getting something better. In actuality, we're not. Another big myth that we get hit a lot with is that it costs more to eat clean. How many people have heard of Aldi? All of us? On your weekly shopping rotation, that's the first place that you stop. Make that your first place. It's the cheapest place. They have a lot of organic selections. You can get probably 60% of what you need there. Stop by all. When you eat clean, in the end, it's cheaper. Because if I went and had McDonald's right now, in about four hours, things aren't working right. When you eat clean, you can sit down and have what we just had this morning, and you're comfortable. And two hours later, you're hungry again. And then you'll eat another something, and you're comfortable. And then another two hours later, you're hungry again. What I found when people want to lose weight, we eat more. But what do diets do? Restrict. So one of my favorite sayings that I say to myself daily is how's that working for you? In other words, if you want to limit me to a thousand calories a day, am I going to lose weight? Yeah. Yes. But physically I'm going to look like a wilted candle. Right? Because you're going to lose all your muscle mass. Is that what you want? No, you want to be healthy and vibrant and strong and energetic. You won't get that by cutting that. So what we found working with athletes is that you need to eat more. Mm -hmm. So every three hours, eat something. Eat vegetables. Eat burgers. Eat chicken. You can eat a lot. You'd be surprised how much you can eat. Eat burgers. more. Hmm? You can eat burgers. Yeah. Yep. You sure can. Uh, this is another one of my favorites. Again, I put in a few of these because I think this totally relates to our healthcare system. Okay? David, you have one of the worst cavities I have ever seen. Okay. Have a good day. Aren't you going to fix it? Well, I'm not a dentist. I'm a dental monitor. I just tell you when you have a bad cavity. Okay. Much? <laughs> oh, yes. Stay gone. I remember being at home watching that for the first time, and I, I like, wait a minute, wait a minute, I gotta see that again. <laughs> Is this not what our healthcare system has become? Pretty much. I'm a health monitor. You've got high blood pressure. Here's some meds. You've got diabetes. Here's some meds. Yeah. Right? It's true. Instead of, on the other side of being a monitor, you would get to the cause. Okay, so let's run a baseline. Let's see where you're at, your vitamin minerals are at, your lipids. Let's run baselines, and then from there, we're going to figure out where your challenges are. So, yes, I love that. Our current healthcare system is monitors. It speaks, to the, speaks volumes on whether it's working or not. Do you know that uh, the United States healthcare system, um, we rank 37th out of 78 countries. Wow. And when it comes to things like women's health and children's health, we run right in the late 30s and into the 40s. So when we talk about the world's best healthcare system is the United States, my first question is, based on what statistics? Based on what statistics? You have to know this back end stuff so that you start making more front end decisions. Had a conversation with a friend of mine last night 
And he says, why do people always have to find motivation for doing what they know they need to do? I don't know. I don't know. <coughs> the FDA monitors, they don't regulate. Anyone that's a sports fan, this is the NCAA. Yeah. They monitor sports, they don't regulate it. Things, things are falling off on the wheels there. Food is about wins. Life is about wins. You've heard me speak before. Wins, the only way you're going to make progress in whatever your challenge is, is wins. If your challenge is gambling or addictions of any kind, if your challenge is uh, depression, the only way you're going to win is by put a stringing together wins. There was a, uh, a general that spoke at commencements, and he said, you want to start with wins, get up every day and make your bed. Get up every day and make your bed. It's a win. Get up every day and drink 12 ounces of water. As soon as you get out of bed, before you get your coffee, before you do, get your 12 ounces of water. May I grab it? One of these. I get up at 6 a.m. Some of my staff, they left me because they're up way earlier than I am. As soon as you get up in the morning, if I get up at 6 a.m., when was the last time that I had water? Right. And if I went to bed at 10 o'clock, you're not going to drink water before you go to bed because then you're up at midnight, 1 o'clock, going to the bathroom, right? So it's usually like 8, 9 o'clock. So your body's dehydrated. Right? Your body's dehydrated. Get up in the morning and start drinking until you feel like you're full. And it's probably going to be the entire 12 ounces. What you've done is you've just kick-started your metabolism. So now you can eat more. That's the great thing about exercise, is it allows you to eat more food. All of us love food. Plan your work and work your plans. That's one of the biggest obstacles that we can ever change. If you want to change what you eat, show me where you've written it down. Because if you haven't written it down, it's not going to take place. We have ETSU here in town, right? If you're going to walk in there and you're going to say, I want to be a lawyer, they're going to say, okay, have you been to college before? No. Here's an entire list from year one through the end of year seven of every class that you're going to take. Right? Get an 80%, move on. 80%, move on. They've planned the work. They've planned the syllabus, they've planned the curriculum, they've done all the work. What do you have to do as a student? Work it. Work the plan. That's what college is. They've planned the work, you work the plan. It's kind of like what the Bible does for us. The work's there. Here, you just got to do it. You don't want to. If you want anything that's meaningful, you have to plan the work and you have to work the plan. How many of you feel that being healthy is a lack of symptoms? What about high blood pressure? Well, if you're healthy, you won't have. I used to be a bodybuilder and was not sick for the whole six years I competed. I even exposed myself to sick people. Couldn't be safe. So. Yeah, the bodybuilding world is really weird. You've got 80% are doing great things. Eating clean, exercising. 20, it's the 20% that's, that's crazy. Yeah, they're off the hook. Yes. Um, for 20 years, I was one of the lead physicians with Arnold Schwarzenegger up at the Arnold Classic. There's only two chiropractors in 20 years, and I was one of the 20. That gave me an insight. Yeah, yeah, you've yeah. got that. I stopped competing because women were starting to use uh, all kinds of um, enhancement drugs, and mm -hmm. I chose not to, to do that. I just I wanted you, to be clean. 
If you were to look at it today, you would be pleasantly surprised. Oh, really? Now there's six different categories. Mm -hmm. uh, the top two categories is where you see the, the drugs. Yeah. The other four you typically don't, yeah. which is what it should be. Mm -hmm. Men, unfortunately, they need mass to go on stage. And uh, it's funny because when new people go to the gym, they think, I don't want to be big and bulky. And we just chuckle. It's like, yeah, yeah. Right. wouldn't that be a problem? <laughs> You know, that's what we go to the gym for. We'll let yeah. there. This is one of the, if you take nothing away, this is the slide that means everything. You've got to plan your work. So on Sundays, plan your work. On Sundays is when you meal prep. So Sundays is when you're cooking up all your proteins. All your beef and your chicken and your fish, and then you stick it away. And then throughout the week, you just grab what you need. And when you get really good at it, then you'll meal prep for the entire week, put them in containers, and this is Monday, this is Tuesday. Is it sexy? No. Is it spontaneous? No. But what do you want? Do, do you want the benefits? So what I encourage everyone to do, and very few do it, take six months and get as disciplined as you possibly can and see where it takes you. What's six months? We did a TV show based on The Biggest Loser um, five years ago. It was based in Kingsport. Mm -hmm. And I had five contestants, and the guy that won lost 171 pounds in nine months. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. And today he's heavier than he was when he started. Yeah. Oh, wow. Not surprising. Because you didn't change this. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. This is where the break is, not here. Mm -hmm. If you don't change this, you can't change anything. That's where it needs to be. Okay, let's get into some things that you're going to want to know. First thing that you start with is your water. <clears throat> Chlorine fluoride. Right? That's what, in other words, when this water, you could put this in and then four years from now come back and still say. There's good, better, best. So the best is reverse osmosis. Filtered is good. In our office, Miss Helen, we've got that big water machine between the bathrooms. Dual filters, carbon-based. It's not RO, but it's the next one. So whenever you look at a lot of your decisions, this comes down to good, better, best. That's what it comes down to. And usually that comes down to price points. Our system that we had put in, I think it was $1,800. We have reverse osmosis, and you might think it's expensive, but it's cheaper than buying bottled water. Yep, sure is. And I don't think drinking water out of a plastic bottle all the time is real good either. Right, right, but so many times we don't. It doesn't. It doesn't equate. Right. So if anybody's interested in water systems, I've got connections for all these things that we do. By the way, how much does the dime weigh? Close. Yes, sir. This is great. I love the prior from him. I wanted to contribute to his college fund. There you go. Thank you. You're getting some love here, aren't you? Yes, you are. 2.268 grams. 2.268 grams. 2.268 grams. How many ounces? That's weird. I'll take that back. Thank you. Yeah, no, yeah, 2.268 grams. That's right. Yes. Not much. <laughs> Not much. Exactly. So with water, we want RO. We want clean water. We want to filter it as much as possible. So it all comes down to price points. RO, you can get an entire system in your house. What is RO? Reverse osmosis. Oh, RO. Um, they can come in your main water line to your house. They can install the system. It's not all this maintenance stuff like it used to be. It's very easy, very effective. Your shower is then RO water. Um, everything is RO for the entire house. It's wonderful. That's the best. If price point doesn't meet there, then you can go to uh, Walmart and they've got the 
one and a half gallon containers with the carbon filters. Good, better, best, right? You want to get to the point where you're drinking half your body weight in ounces per day. If you weigh 150 pounds, that's 75 ounces. 128 ounces per gallon. Easy enough. But if you get out of bed, and the first thing you do is one of these, when I get out of bed in the morning, that's what I drink. I have seven grandkids, and one of the, uh, these blender bottles, um, my grandkids know that Papa's here. <laughs> because I typically have about four or five, and I'm constantly playing. Is glass better? Yes. But I end up dropping the glass ones, and they break, and so I have those. Half of your body weight in ounces per day. Now, usually when I do these lectures, I'll have somebody that barely gets 20 ounces a day. Or they'll get up in the morning, and they'll have two, three, four cups of coffee, they get up at seven, two, three cups of coffee, and then they don't get to water until maybe noon. Your body is seriously dehydrated. Over 70% of your body is water. You've got to hydrate it. I don't like water. Ah, there's the problem, right? Because as we know, it's not about what you like. You give your body what it needs. If you want this bad enough, then you give it what it needs to get there. Right? Easy enough. Half your body weight in ounces per day. If you weigh 250, that's 125 ounces of water. That's a starting point. Now, if you add caffeine to it, what will caffeine do in your body? Dehydrate. Dehydrate you. So now, if you get up in the morning and you're a coffee person and you have two cups, which is great. But if it's caffeinated, then you're going to have to add to replace or balance that out. So that's why you need to drink <laughs> I won't tell. <laughs> the next one. First meal of the day is usually what? Breakfast. Breakfast. When you eat, you're eating for a purpose, right? Your body is a machine, is it not? Your body is two things. First, your body is your vehicle to get through life. How did you get here? Your body. Body took you and placed you in a car, and you drove here. Because if I were to ask, where are you? You're that six inches between your ears, right? This body is your vehicle. Your body is also, what? It's your history book. It's your history book of all the good things you've done and all the not good things you've done. Now, if you're a male, men have a laundry list of male stupidity. So usually, <laughs> Do we not? We have a long list of things in our youth where it's like, man, I really shouldn't have done that. But we do. And then we turn around and do it again. Do I need to give you another dime for that? Again, source. Yes. Eggs are fine. No. Bacon's fine. Bacon sausage. sausage, fine. Mm. You just don't eat the manufactured stuff. You don't eat the mass produce stuff. Mm -hmm. If you get bacon from one of our local farmers, is it not different than what you get at the store? Mm -hmm. There's a reason. Stick with local. It's okay to have two or three slices of bacon. It's okay to have a couple of sausage legs. It's really not that big a deal. <clears throat> eggs. A couple of eggs in the morning. Again, you want to get your higher proteins in the morning? Moderate carbohydrates. When it comes to food, they talk about micros and macros. Micros are your vitamins, your minerals. Macros are going to be proteins, carbs, and fats. Fats are good for you. Understand that. If you go on a no-fat diet, you're in trouble. Why? Every cell, trying to find something that's got a good shape. That little water bottle's got a good shape. <clears throat> Every cell has an outer layer to it, just like this little container has an outer layer. 
Every cell, the outer layer is called a double lipid bilayer. In other words, the lipids are facing each other. And they determine things come in and they determine things go out. What's a lipid? Fat. If you take fat out of your diet, how are those cells going to replenish? They're not. They're They're not. Exactly. So if Exactly. So if a cell cannot get rid of its byproduct, and if it cannot recharge, it becomes hypoxic, which means no oxygen. Once a cell loses 60% of its oxygen, it will be cancerous. So let's cut to the chase. Has a low-fat diet contributed to a rise in cancer rates since the 60s? Yeah. Yes. Yes, we're doing it to ourselves. Where do you get good fats from? Yes, there's a company in town called Olive Oil Divine. Anybody familiar with that? <laughs> go there. Go there, you told them that you heard this chiropractor running his mouth, and that's the place to go. All the colors? Oh, they have everything there. They have something like at least 25, maybe 50 different oils and vinegars. Cool. Yeah, so they have some stuff that you can put on, on uh, beef that's just mm -hmm. like, it's called cask. Cast cask. Um, incredible. And then they have other stuff that you can sprinkle on popcorn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's too. Mm -hmm. So you can get all of your fats from there. Yes, ma'am? Going back, can you clarify what you mean by a small amount of opium? So oatmeal is going to be a grain. Okay? The problem with grains is that if people just need to lose 30, 40 pounds, cut out sugar, cut out breads. Right? You cut out sugar, you cut out breads, and watch your waistline. Now if you want to tweak it a little bit, bump up your water, stay away from processed foods. Your body is a reflection of your lifestyle. Okay, with that said, what about genetics? Let's, let's cut down the whole... Uh, <coughs> I don't want to mark something that I'm going to regret. <laughs> I don't want to say anything. When you look at healthcare, 85% of our healthcare system is chronic disease. Chronic disease. Chronic disease is defined as ramping up over time. If it ramps up over time, does it make sense that it's your lifestyle? How can you cure something that your lifestyle created? You don't. We're going to find a cure for cancer. Baloney. You don't cure those things. You reverse them. You stop doing the things that you've been doing and drive down the ramp. You reverse it. The problem with reversing things is that that door, it may be locked for cancer. And cancer is running up and down the hall. And the door is locked. Your lifestyle makes that door susceptible for breach. Make sense? And if you allow your lifestyle to hit that door all the time, at some point that door is going to give. You're allowing cancer in. <clears throat> right? You can reverse it. You can push the cancer back and you can close the door. But you can't lock it no more. Meaning it's going to come back. Anyone familiar with a PET scan? Mm -hmm. The PET scan, in and of itself, tells you that processed sugar feeds cancer. Do they, do they tell you that? No, why not? My God, that's, that's the essence of feeding cancer. If I had stage four cancer, first step that I need to do is to keep it from growing. Right? Because as long as it's not growing, I'm still rising every day and I'm still in the bath. 
How do you stop cancer from growing? Stop feeding it. What feeds it? Processed foods. More specifically, processed sugars. That should be the first thing they tell you about cancer. And if you've had cancer, and they have able to radiate it, cut, burn, poison, however they're going to do, and it's in remission, don't go back to the lifestyle that created it. Right? Stop doing it. First thing you do with cancer. So that, there's so many reasons why we have to stay away from sugar and processed foods. Blood pressure, yep. Diabetes, obvious. Insulin resistance, ooh, type three diabetes. You see? And it's not that, we had this discussion when you first came in, it's not that we're gonna take something away from you, you can't have it, what we do is we take away the garbage and replace it with something that's going to benefit you that's not harmful. Hence, olive oil divine and their products. Avocados. I love avocados. But you sure can't eat three of them a day. It's too much fat. Yeah. Right? So if you have one a week, great. But your body needs fat. Your brain needs fat. Yes. Yes, it does. It needs good fat and not saturated and not processed fat, right? So that's why you stick to the things that God gave you, like avocados, nuts, seeds. Yeah. It's just an exchange, right? Moderate carbohydrates. If you're eating breads in the morning, you've got to get away from the breads. So you can have a sweet potato for a carbohydrate. A lot of the bodybuilders, we go with rice. Rice is a big one. But if you look at white rice, it's, it's just the outer husk is stripped off, and then they bleach it. Yeah. Well, you know, that, that, that's not good for you. So in our world, rice is a real big thing for the carbs. So we touched on proteins, moderate carbs, low fats. If you're going to eat, if you're one of these people that just loves to eat, breakfast is your boy. You sit down and you eat. And if you want to go back and eat some more, have at it. Same way with lunch. Because hopefully you'll be busy enough throughout the day and active enough. And you're going to find that when you eat good quality food and you're busy, you'll be busier. Because now you have some clarity. Now you've got energy. Now you're vibrant. Now you want to do things. The only other variable that you see in our office when we do uh, hormone replacement. As you get older, your hormones start to drop. So we do blood work and we raise your hormones up. Um, a, a natural product that's not synthetic and it keeps your hormones at a steady level. And now all of a sudden you have clarity and you have energy and your body's working the way it should. Next one. Second meal is usually lunch, right? Maximize your lunch by eating a loaded salad. Okay, what do I mean by a loaded salad? You can put different types of greens, right? And then you can add things like, I used to love uh, over by Planet Fitness, there was a little deli there. Help me with the name, folks. Jason's Deli. Jason's Deli, I used to love there. Because you could go in at lunchtime and they had the whole salad, and you could throw some greens and every vegetable you'd want, and you could put some hard-boiled eggs on that rascal and some bacon chunks. Man, you could go to town on that. And you had a plate of food. Good. Now you avoid the dressings, but then you put some balsamic and some, some oil, some, some fats on there. Great. Eat all that that you can. Because that's when most of us are busy throughout the day. So eat accordingly. Back in your day, you ate before you went to the gym, and there were certain things that you ate, and then immediately after you went to the gym, then it's different, but it's things you ate. So before we go to the gym, we carb up. Depending on our, our loads. If you're doing a lot of heavy things like squats and deadlifts, 
you're going to eat like a whole sweet potato. Yeah. Exactly. And you're going to be full. Right. But once you got to the gym, you were like, thankful you had that. Yeah. But then when you leave, yeah. now you're going to crank up your proteins because your body needs to, yes. to, re to yeah. repair. Yeah. And this may sound like a lot, but once you get into the habit, it's just like dancing. When you first learn how to dance, you're clumsy. But after a while, you get, you get really, really good at it. Third meal is usually dinner, right? This is where you need to start cutting back on those carbs. If you did like zero fats, I'm good with that. So your fats, you just want to sprinkle in, right? Like at lunchtime, half of an avocado, two, two times a week, three times a week. A little bit of nuts, a little bit of seeds. Great. That's, the, that's more than enough fats for, for the week. Your proteins, then you eat a lot of those at breakfast, you eat a lot of those at lunch. By the time you're coming to dinner, you're really scaling back. And what you're really scaling back at dinner time is your volume of food. But that's where you're gonna get into a, a problem because when you're busy all day and you're getting things done, by the time you sit down for dinner, you're like, oh, I'm ready to eat. Mm -hmm. And you gotta, you gotta back it down. So the, the volume of food at dinner is gonna be a third of what you had at lunch. Scale it back. Scale it back. Does that make sense, folks? Mm -hmm. And again, this is all just being smart. When you initially start, you may wanna write things out. What am I gonna eat Monday? What am I gonna eat Tuesday? And you have to develop a way that you're really comfortable and, and you know because that way you can travel. A lot of the uh, folks that I worked with at Arnold, they would literally have a duffel bag that was about two and a half foot long, about a foot and a half wide, and it would be a duffel bag and it was nothing but containers of food and drinks. And that they would take that with them throughout the day because they needed to know how much carbs, how much proteins at what time and that's why I didn't like the sport because the sport became uh, a life it, it instead does. of a lifestyle. It does. Yeah. yeah, I was I was monitoring everything that went in, everything. Wow, and I just it, in my workout book I had it all written down. Yeah, it just like after six. It becomes years, consuming. Yeah. yeah, I got into that when I was in my teenage years. Um, I got married young, start started a family, and they became my priority. So that mm -hmm. that didn't. But when you look at dinner time, does that make sense though? Mm -hmm. Breakfast time, you, you can eat a lot, right? How many eggs do you want until you're full? How much salad at lunchtime until you're stuffed, until you're uncomfortable? And then you get up and go, yeah. go get things done. But you're gonna find that when you eat good foods, especially man, when you eat fats, mm -hmm. you're gonna find that your body responds quickly very large building blocks. Snacks, we have those in back. Mm -hmm. Granny Smith apples. Yeah. Where can you get um, almond butter ground like this? Anywhere. Yeah. Um, 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 Ingalls has that. Yes. Um, Earth Fair has that. Mm -hmm. And there's enough Ingalls around. I don't think Food City has that. Mm -hmm. Publix. Publix has it. Publix has it, yes. Don't they have ground? Mm -hmm. Right, so Granny Smith apples, they're the green ones. The reason we go Granny Smith is because they're lower on the glycemic index. Mm -hmm. So this is a real good basis. Now, let's get into some details. Berries. Well, what is this exactly? Almond butter. It's just almond butter. Ground yeah. almonds, just ground almonds. Just ground almonds. Okay. Yep. And then you, you take uh, an apple and dice it. And you're going to find that when you do need a snack, you won't eat a whole apple. Mm -hmm. You may eat two or three of those wedges and dip them with some almond butter. <clears throat> you're good. But you know when you're doing it right because two hours to three hours later, you're hungry again. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to feel your, your metabolism pick up. That's when you know you're on the right track your metabolism bumps. So there's a couple things we haven't talked about. We need to get, get wrapping up here. Berries. 
Berries are good. Berries are in the morning, meaning breakfast and lunch. Berries are not for the afternoon. Okay? Because there's a lot of sugar in them. But it's a natural sugar. It's not processed. Okay? So natural sugars do not feed cancers. Processed sugars do. We know that by PET scans. Okay? But the more natural sugars that you eat, it bumps up, it increases your inflammation levels. Inflammation is a problem because now we know that inflammation is the driving force behind cardiovascular disease. Okay? So that's why if we're going to do natural sugars, we'll do them in the morning because you're up and busy. You're up and busy and burning. Now that doesn't mean that you have a bowl of berries, right? It's just a handful, sprinkle them on. Fair enough? Okay, so berries was one of the, the big ones. Uh, I, I just had the other one. So we talked about water, we talked about breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. Do them in that order. Don't do all of this at one time. Don't do it. That's like being out of college for all these years and then signing up for 30 credits. Yeah. Right? Your parachute is going to take you an awful long time to open. Right? That was one of the things that I, I always chuckled about chiropractic school. Chiropractic school is 120 credits mm -hmm. per year for four years. Let that filter in. <laughs> how much does a dime weigh? Okay, I'm, I'm going to wrap up a dime stories then. Take a dime, put it on the back of your hand. As we chat, how long do you feel that? Do you have a dime? Yes. <laughs> you sat up front. I'm not going to let you out. Yes. Okay. I understand the feeling. I have kids. There comes a point when you don't feel that dime. Right? How many systems are in the body? Eleven. Eleven systems. Are they all equally as important? Are there priorities in the body? Yes. So for instance, if I have a triangle, the bottom is least important, top is most important, right? On the bottom is exercise. Yeah, surprising, huh? You just give me that look. <laughs> On the bottom is exercise. How long, hear, hear my phrase, how long can you live without exercising? 50 years so far. <laughs> Right? Right? He, he is exactly right. You need to be active. Yeah. Right? But how long can you live without exercising? Lifetime. How long can you live without food? This one you can't answer. Three days. Two days. Two weeks. A month. You can live longer than a month. I weigh 260 pounds. I could probably live a good six, seven weeks. Right? So that's the next one up. You see how I'm going from bottom to top. Yet, if you want to be healthy, what are the first two things we look at? What you eat and exercise. No, folks, we got, we got it wrong. How do I know that? How's that working for you? Right? What's more important than food? Water. Every two to three days, right? Got to have water. Yet, I fight with people just to drink a bottle a day, right? Oxygen, more important than water, right? Yeah. How often do you need to breathe? All the time. Minutes. <laughs> right? We can go as long as 20 minutes without, right? Don't forget to sleep. <laughs> oh, yeah, sleep, thank you. How long can we go without sleep? 48 hours? Are you to the point yet where you don't feel that dime? Yeah. Yeah. Amazing, right? Yeah. What is on the top of our triangle? On the top of our triangle in your body systems, is your brain communicating with your body, telling it what to do. Mm -hmm. so how, do I, how do I know that? Because it's called paralysis. When you've lost 100% nerve flow, we know that's paralysis. What's 50% loss of nerve flow? I don't think doctors do that. They want to mask their problem. And it's not their fault. It's the system that they've been trained in. 
Now, if I've been in a car wreck and I'm busted up pretty good, right? I need I need to go right. to the appropriate right. specialty. There is a time and place for everything. But if our goal is to be healthy, okay, what are we doing for health? For instance, health is defined as functioning at or near 100% and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Dorland's medical text. That's the quote, that's the definition. So health is how you function, not how you feel. Sorry, I've got to go and hear your I bet you're going to come to every one of my lectures, aren't you? Yeah. Next time we're going to do Weight of a Dollar Bill. Yeah. Two quarters next time. He's over there thinking, man, a $100 bill, how much does that weigh? Gold coins. So if, if the last two years has taught us anything, it's that so many times we're doing what we're told and we're not thinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like I tell my four kids, I don't necessarily want you to agree with me. But I want you to go through the process of breaking down why you feel that way. Yeah. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? And it has to be a reasonable decision, not something that's emotional. Well, it just makes me feel good. Yeah, yeah, I can go out and do a couple shots and feel good too. That dime <laughs> sitting on my nerve has decreased my nerve reaction by 60%. Sitting in this chair is worse. <laughs> yes. So that's why we don't sit too long. Right? How many times have you sat too long and you get up and you're like, especially? I know it says I went to commencement on Saturday. I sat in a aluminum bleacher for an hour and a half. I got up and was like, oh, Lord, have mercy. You know, everything hurt. So you have this handout. Let me explain what this handout is. Oh, I didn't get one. Dirty dozen, clean 15. Okay? I didn't know that latest. Yes. What this describes is the amount of pesticides that are sprayed on these products. These pesticides make them dirty. That's why those on the dirty dozen, they need to be washed very much. Yes, you buy them organic, but they still need to be washed. Okay? If you look at the clean 15, like an avocado, we can shut the outer layer. Right? You just wash everything. So my recommendation is just get in the habit of prepping your food in one way, the right way meaning clean everything, wash everything, wash your countertops, wash it, wash your hands. If you get in the habit of that, then you don't have to worry about the rest of this stuff. So that stuff is okay to eat, the dirty dozen, if you wash it? Yes, but you need to wash it. It's a priority to wash it, right? right? The clean 15, you can be a little lazy on that. So, when you think of uh, GMO products, corn's the biggest one. Just about 99 point something percent of corn is GMO. So it's, you know, corn's one of those things like, yeah, just stay away from it. When you have health, you have the time to master anything. Now we're starting to see young people. You know, I went to a funeral three weeks ago of a patient that at 42 or 45 years old passed away. That's just wrong. You know, it's just wrong. But we have to make it a priority. And, you know, men have this problem where we always want to make our careers our, our priority. Well, Steve Jobs, there's a quote by Steve that said, why is it that we spend all of our younger years sacrificing everything for money only to get older and having to spend all of our money to get health because we sacrificed her. Did he die from cancer? He did. He did. Right. And he's exactly right. So you have to sit down as young people, and I encourage you as being uh, at an age where you have children, you got to talk to them. 
we may not be able to do the things that we used to do, but the one thing we can do is to educate our kids and grandkids on why they need to go in certain ways. I put this one on the end because you need a reminder. I, your health is up to you, just like your dimes are your responsibility now. Right? If you come in my adjusting room next time, I have all of them stacked up on my counter. Yeah, because I always do that. You'll come in and get adjusted, and I'll give you a dime. What's this for? When you come back, tell me how much it weighs. Oh. Well, you owe me about 50 cents then. Uh. I'm not going to every time. Oh, okay. it's, it's, our, it's our responsibility mm -hmm. yeah. to look at this and to make it a different when way. When I was a kid, my doctor, I had an injury and my doctor sewed me up and he gave me a dime to go get ice cream and I got a double dip. Wow. Well, that's wow. Not you got a lot of dips. <laughs> Thank you all for coming out. I appreciate it. Please look at the newsletters for the next time that we'll be out. If there's a topic that, um, that you want us to talk about, please let us know. Uh, we're open for just about any, anything. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you.